These are the human chromosomes. 23 pairs. 23 from your mother and 23 from your father. These ones are special because they determine a person's gender. But has society interpreted them differently? I think if we look back at the dawn of civilization and early, early uh, forms of male-female relationships in society, um, if we look at our greatest ancestors way back when, you know, maybe women, because they were the one who gave birth and had the children, then, and they obviously the ones who were nurturing and helping the children grow, it was natural. It may have been natural for them to stay in their communities, taking care of the babies, helping to take the food that had been brought into the community, cook the food, man the food, and take care of daily life while uh, the male counterparts are out hunting and gathering in society. Um, so maybe that role in society has started from this original place and maybe, maybe this thread of it has continued on with us. Um, if we look at how society has evolved over time, um, let's say even warring parties, or even when I look at the American Civil War, women would still follow wherever the fight was. They would still be there with their families and communities, but their roles would often be in the back, helping to feed, to clothe, to, to man the wounded, um, as opposed to being out doing maybe the more uh, like hunting and gathering kind of notion of fighting and warring. Um, when we move into the modern day and we get the idea of young people, um, that's really so modern because those young women and men who now would be called teens, they had a role in the family to either continue on the business, um, to be married off as a piece of property in the family, and to start their own families that would add to the family's wealth. So when we look at that traveling through time, is sexism something that's been trained throughout society to us again and again? Are we moving ourselves away from that initial hunter-gathering community? Um, in some ways, yes, and in some ways, no, because whoever is out making the money, and when we look in modern day society, those who have the power, who make most of the money in society and control our businesses, and even maybe many family units out there, tend to be men. So in that type of a society, that also cultivates what it wants. It wants young girls to want these kind of jobs. It wants young women to want to become mothers. It wants young women to go into maybe these fields of study over others. So do I think sexism is something that has been trained and trained over and over again? It's quite possible. Um, who has power? In the modern day, we have to ask ourselves who makes the most money, who has the most prestigious job, uh, who holds the most positions in government. And I think for most of us, if we looked up those stats online, we would see it is our males in society. Does the presence of sexism in school deter teens from participating in activities they might enjoy? I would define sexism as having unequal rights for either male or female, um, just not having the same standards or even the same opportunities. Sexism is when one group of people or one gender gets uh, more opportunities and is treated in a more favorable way as opposed to another gender or another sex. Um, sexism is the discrimination against a certain gender. The definition of sexism is prejudice, stereotyping, or discrimination, typically against women, on the basis of sex. To find out more about sexism in schools, our sexism enthusiast Peter went to Ridgeview Collegiate to interview some teens. Um, I would say like, okay, the guys play basketball at lunch like every day and they play after school pretty much all the time and I definitely hesitate to do that just
just because there was no other girls in there and it's all guys and it's kind of weird to go in and just play with them especially because even they have different size basketballs and so you're switching from playing with a girls ball which is smaller to a guys ball and it's kind of annoying in that sense too because you have to adjust to it. When I played hockey like I would play since I was like in grade two and like when you tell people that they're they kind of like take a step back and like oh wait why is a girl playing hockey and it just stereotypes that girls aren't supposed to be like to play rough or like to body check or like cross check people and it's kind of annoying because girls are perfectly capable of doing a lot of things that guys can there are some clothes that are like ooh this looks nice and then like my second thought was but like it's kind of feminine but like i know that's like personally me but I don't know if that's a sexism thing, but... For sure, I definitely think that um, while we describe guys to be more athletic and stronger and things like that, right now that is absolutely true, but I honestly think that the reason for that is because since prehistoric time, guys have been going out and doing all these things, they have been playing sports and doing things for much longer than women have and so as our, bo our bodies just haven't developed the same things that they do, they've developed to do things in the kitchen and things like that um, and it's getting more and more that you see girls to be just as athletic or catching up in the athleticism towards guys and things like that. So yeah. their, their whole excuse of why uh, women shouldn't be uh, as, what's the word, um, well treated as men is because that their whole idea of um, Eve ate the apple, that's the original sin. And they believe that, oh, because um, Eve, who was the original woman, decided to eat the apple, that all women should be punished. Yeah, of course. It, like, gender bias has to start from somewhere. And um, like it's antiquated now, but in prehistoric times where uh, genders played a role in what you did, like if you look at lions, uh, one gender hunts and gathers, one gender hunts and the other one takes care of the cubs. And um, I believe this started this whole gender, gender bias and sexism. And um, it really just led to a normal like, sense of what gender is that just continued and continued until it was, it became something that was so antiquated and so useless that no one got rid of it because it was just kind of there and it was just a tradition. Here's an example of a true story that proves that sexism has deterred women from taking an interest in specific subjects because of society's expectations. You're not as smart, you're not as efficient in math, so don't even try. Yeah. That's the kind of shit that, uh, look, I didn't get it from my teachers, but it was definitely what society tells you as you're growing up, which is part of the reason why I thought, I'm not going to be good at science, I'm not going to be good at math, so I didn't even attempt to excel at those things. Mm -hmm. I focused more on English and history, and, and I'm a little bitter about that, because I think that there should be more emphasis placed on both boys and girls focusing on science and math. Those are the, you know, the fields that are most important right now. In many households, parents will tell their children how to behave based on their gender. When these children become teenagers, their, their, their parents' beliefs and values could become their beliefs and values. Parents may unknowingly conditioning their children to think that girls and boys have different roles. This is a big problem, because these values can make a certain teen avoid things because they don't fit in the gender norms their parents raise them with, limiting them from self-discovery. We asked an expert on sexism in teenagers. Here's what they had to say. That sexism involves um, where one gender um, is disadvantaged uh, or not able to, um, to do something solely because they're a particular gender. Um, I think uh, sort of, I would say yes, but not consciously a lot of times um, because of modeling right it's just that you know even in my household um, you know I, I basically take care of everything right so I think my children or my and I have a son and a daughter right he probably thinks that you know dishes and laundry and all those kinds of things are probably what women do right 
right? Um, so there are def I think, uh, I mean, definitely, right? We learn lots of things from our parents, whether it's direct instruction or sometimes just from observation. To, you know, address it with the person, your, your employer, right? So um, to, to talk about equity. Um, if it's in school, I would say, um, you know, obviously you need to address it with, um, or if it's something that boys can do but girls cannot, or vice versa, right? So I would say there's also re the other uh, reverse, kind of reverse sexism where, you know, there are occupations and, and, and perhaps roles that typically girls, we expect girls to do and guys not, right? Like nursing, it used to be, you know, uh, mostly a female as opposed to a male kind of uh, uh, career. But definitely to address it with the people in charge, <coughs> excuse me, and um, to fight for your rights.